Is your glass broken? Is it? Okay. This is the second time I've come to your house and you've given me a broken glass. Hello and welcome to another edition of Mandate Monday, ah! our holiday edition. Calm down. Oh, this one isn't very special. It's not very special. Is this it's not, just this not a Christmas one? No. This is this, this is a holiday this, one. This is it. It's it's. I'm just asking. I'm doing a Christmas special. I don't know what you're doing. I'm, I'm doing a Diwali special. We are very excited for this episode because we are pretty much doing the tour of Italy from Olive Garden in Scotland for <laughs> drinking. It's the best way to compare it. These are the six classic malts. Uh, he's done, he's done, he's done. <laughs> Did I offend Italy for you? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I've offended your people. No, it just didn't make sense. You know what makes more sense? What? FedEx Express. Federal Express Express. This is just generally known as the classic malt of each region of Scotland. Can we just have some whiskey, fellas? So as we start this out, we're gonna go with the Oban. It's a 14 year, which is actually out of the West Highland region. The distillery was established in 1794. Why not have a little? Happy Diwali. <laughs> Happy Diwali. <laughs> very, very good. A bit of Hinge sharp. Peaty. Definitely never, get, never, yeah. never, and you know what's funny, I never, Tastes a little bit of peat in it still now. A bit, yeah, there's definitely a bit of smoke some peat in there. Not it's, heavy. Yeah, but, but it's still sweet. Mm. It's a bit sharp. What is this actually, what is the APV? So this is 43% uh, ABV. And I honestly like the Oban a lot. I This is my bottle, I own it because I actually do like it. Uh, what does this retail for? I think it's usually 70 to 80 yeah, bucks. Like 70. So I don't see the peat, but I got the smoke. So uh, it is uh, said to have a lot of fruit. Uh, and citrus flavors to it. I can see citrus to it when you have it to the nose. It says the taste is mouth filling. If you fill your mouth with it, yeah, of course. Technically, anything can be mouth filling. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> the lucky is Diwali, and I can't talk. To you. And by the way, Diwali passed like a month ago. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Mm. <laughs> Just summing it up, I mean, I definitely do like it. Um, like I said, very close with the sweetness to a McKellen that I like. There is a bit of the smoke in there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I definitely think this is a thumbs up. I love the Oban. I would recommend Oban to anybody. It's also a really good whiskey if you're, <clears throat> if you're starting off. Somebody who likes McCallum or Glenn Levitt, I would get him this. Definitely. So we get the color with the U is olive gold. <laughs> our, our first stop out of the West Highland region, uh, the, the Oban, the 14 year. Uh, definitely a fantastic thumbs up on my side. What about you guys? I, I love yeah. this whiskey. It's definitely a thumbs up. Yeah. So give this a shot. Next on our tour of Scotland, we're going to the Glen Kinchy, a 10 year, which is actually out of the lowlands of Scotland. And this is defined as the ladies whiskey. After doing some research, it turns out that the Glen Kinchy is one of the last operating distilleries in the lowland area. Uh, it's uh, 15 miles south of Edinburgh, which is also known as the Garden of Scotland. So it's like New Jersey with the Garden State? Well, except not terrible. The reason why it's known as the ladies' whiskey is because it's a very light and floral uh, tasting scotch. So, I've actually it, had Glen Kinchy many also, times in my life, and I've never thought it to be uh, floral. Floral, yeah. You know, just smelling Hello. it. I know we didn't smell up close the other one with the Oban, but not as aromatic as the Oban. But still, a lot of sweetness that I'm pulling out of it. I don't smell flowers, though. I don't either. It actually smells like a wheat whiskey to me. It is a lighter whiskey as it's described. Um, and coloring, it's very simple. I mean, very similar to the Oban. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Wow. Very, very sweet. I like it. What do we have here? Also 43%. There's said to be a touch of peat in here. I'm not really picking up much I don't, peat. No. I don't taste um, any peat. Personally in here, but uh, it's actually, it's it's pretty good. It, it tastes almost like it's more infused with things like, you know, on the honeyer side, as opposed to vanilla or with like sherry casks or anything like that. I could definitely, um, I would think more honey as well. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is a lot smoother. What did you say this bottle cost? We just bought this today. That bottle was like 49 bucks. I will say out of the Lowlands region, uh, a very, very powerful, good scotch. I'd recommend picking up. What do you guys think? Thumbs up? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's good whiskey. Good. So next in our tour of Scotland, we're actually gonna go north and head up to the space side, and we're gonna go with a 12-year crag and more. And that's a fresh bottle. I love that sound. Did we just talk about not pouring a lot? I'm sorry, someone was bitching about how weak my pours were with my own bottles. Is this yours? Did you buy this? Yes, I did. In that case, top me off. Now, this is rated to be more of just a golden color, which will of course be lighter than the dark gold. But they're all brown. What's wrong with brown? Once you go brown, you don't frown. I'm frowning. Why don't we just give it a smell? I'll say, I do pick up a little bit of smoke in this. 
Kind of like the Oban. Very, very faint. Say this would be a very sweet. Yeah, it smells whiskey. sweet. Mm. Yeah. Again, from the space sides, that's typically what you expect. A lot sweeter. Why don't we cheers? <laughs> I didn't drink. I waited. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah, it's already broken. Mazel tov. Wow, that is so guess, very sweet. I guess that would be the Kraken Wall. Yeah, that is very sweet. Surprisingly, like, dry at the end. Okay, it's like, here's the flavor, and then you swallow it up. It's all. aromatic, there's a lot of sweetness in it, but the sweetness is gone, but I'm still tasting the scotch, and it's it's somewhat <clears throat> musty, and it does taste a bit like no, wood. No, yeah, I do get a little woody wood yeah. taste in there. <laughs> I never said I was an adult. You compare it to, like, when you're woodworking, in the sawdust, I would agree with you on that. It is also said that there are flowery and grass-like notes to it. I'm not tasting really much of any no. of that. Well, I've never ate grass, so I guess I couldn't if tell. If I wanted that, I'd go eat some earth. I ended up buying this one. This is something I definitely would buy again from the you, space. You would get more of it? You know, a lot of flavor is a good punch of flavor. It seems very dry after, and the flavor does leave you very quickly. Um, but it but just makes you want more. Exactly. It just Crag it more. <laughs> you know what? I would never buy I wouldn't buy this. You're not a fan of this? No. It wouldn't buy you. Why? <laughs> what about you? I'd get it. So that is it for the Crag and Moor 12, the space side in our tour of Scotland. Next on our tour of Scotland, we get on a boat and we go over to the Isle of Skye, which is where we find Talisker, the only malt that's actually produced on the island. The distiller was found in 1830, and it's a tenure, and I'm pretty pumped to try this out. What it's one here? of my favorites. This is one of your favorites. We're at 45.8% yeah. alcohol here, so a little bit higher than what we used to try. Who's ready? I am. Yeah, that's Whoa! Peat. Right off the bat, yeah. strong yeah. peat. See, all my nose is picking up is the peat. It smells like it'd smack it and you thank it. <laughs> there are other things in it, like I can't really put my nose on it. They say that there's some citrus involved or <clears throat> that there's some citrus notes in here. I'm not picking up citrus. There's other suggestions of seaweedy smells in here. Why don't we give it a try? Here's Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. I'm gonna hit them all today. Now that's whiskey. Out of all the whiskeys we've had so mm. far, this is what I would consider one of the best. There is a salty, peppery taste to it. There is still a punch of sweetness in there that's, that's, that you can definitely pick up. But that peatiness in the finish is definitely there. That peatiness in the nose is definitely there. When you're tasting it, it's not as strong as if had maybe with a frog, for example. This is a very good whiskey to transition into peaty whiskey. So if, you, mm. if you're afraid that you might not like a peaty whiskey and you're like, well, I don't want to waste the money and spend like $80 on a really expensive bottle of whiskey, just find out that I don't like peat, this is a perfect way to find out. You're like, well, I like the aftertaste of it, then you like peaty. This feels like the ocean for some reason. I'm definitely, I can see what you mean. I feel like really? it tastes very good with like seafood. Not like, not like a fun beachy ocean, but like mm -hmm. you're at a port and you're gonna work. Kind of ocean. So, Talisker the Tenure, the only scotch coming out of the Isle of Skye. Uh, heavy peaty influence. Very, very ocean influenced, you know, um, as you're tasting here. Personally, I'm not a huge fan. How do you feel? You're wrong. And that's Jason's opinion. But you, this is one of your number <clears throat> ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Out of, well, this is really my second. Thank you very much for joining us at the Isle of Skye. Let's go ahead on to the next scotch. Next on our tour, we get back on the boat and head on over to the Highlands. Yes, I know you came over, my parents came over on a boat, relax. <laughs> As we try the Dal Winnie. I feel like this is the most fun to say name. Dal Winnie. Dal Winnie. It's like, I don't know why, for some reason when I say Dal Winnie, I just picture Robin Williams in Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire just going, hello, with Dal Winnie. And I do not know why. We're probably on our eighth glass of whiskey right now. So this is a 15 year. This is also at 43% alcohol, so we are toning it back slightly from the Talisker. What do you say we a give this? A whole 2%. Hey. Oh, the Oscar was 45? It was 46.8 or something. I can't get this. This is a very stubby cork. What do we give it a smell? I've never had this whiskey, but it's been the smell of it. Mm. It's going to be very weak. I feel You're like weak. it smells very sweet. There is a smoky aroma to it. That it smells like there's a bit more, it's like a little more honey influenced. What do you say we give it a taste? Oh, I ran out of the holidays. Wow. Much sweeter. With <coughs> the sweetness. <coughs> Uh, the Crag and Moor. That's very similar to Crag and Moor, except yeah. that's sweeter than Crag and Moor. This is much sweeter than the Crag and Moor. Uh, I'd even compare it to, what was the second one we tried? The Ladies Whiskey. Um, Glen Kinchy. And it feels like it has a lot more body than the Glen Kinchy did. Glen Kinchy was very dry. <coughs> man. This still has a good, like, full lingering flavor to it. This um, is sweet, like, from the taste and after taste all throughout. Yeah, very, very uh, sweet. There's, there's, a, there's a little bit of, like, peat and smoke. When it was in the barrel, they were just like, peat. What did this go for? 
60? Six, not That's sixty bucks. Say, not yeah. bad. Wow. I would, I would, um, I would say that this is this is a victory for sixty bucks. It's something I would definitely add. So I give it the thumbs up. <coughs> I would say that's a fail. You don't, you're not a big yeah. fan. All right. Would you buy that again? Maybe. So there we are on the Highland region of the Dalwini 15 year. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to our final uh, stop of the Scotch tour. So our final yet unoptimized stop on this tour of Scotland, we get back on a boat and go over to the Islays and we finalize with our Lagavulin 16. So let's go ahead and pour out some Lagavulin. Before even bringing this to my face, you can already smell the peat coming, just oh, yeah. flying off of it. Oh, absolutely. Mm. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, just the name, like a bull, and it sounds like you're going to get punched in the face. And I don't know if it's because we came up with what we talked about it on the Talisker, but I can almost smell a lot of, like you had said about the, the, the sea influence with it. Not smelling it. Wow. How are you? Well, just flat out compared to the Talisker, a much heavier, just in your face. Can drink or what? <clears throat> wow, can we cheers first at least? Who what holiday have we got left? To so the solstice. solstice. That is good whiskey. I like this much more than the Talisker. Um, a bit oh, yeah, sweeter, absolutely. a lot more complex. It stays with you. It drinks like you're smoking a cigar. There's a lot of sweetness to it. It's a very full body taste to it, and it lingers. It lingers for a while. Uh, it does almost taste like it's a bit salty in a way, similar to the Talisker that we had before. I don't see myself buying this again because I'm not a peated whiskey person, but if I had to choose a peated whiskey, I'd go with the Lagavulin. So that concludes our tour of Scotland with the classic malts. Uh, a fantastic range to represent all the different regions of uh, Scotland here. Thank you very much for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe, and we hope you guys have a fantastic holiday, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. Diwali. Diwali, all of them. 